And also, um, this is running locally and it is like the best thing that you can do to ensure your privacy. None of your data is going out at all. Like I can, I can turn my Wi-Fi off like right now. Look at that. And it can still run. It's cooking, it's cooking. And look at the speed. Like it is producing tokens so freaking fast. And this is a 14 billion model. It is not a small model. So here's some cool stuff that you can build. I'm gonna show you guys like a quick demo of what I build. So this is a project that I built for a, a company called Peaks. It is a RAG system, meaning retrieval augmented generation. Who built you? Are you any smart? All right. Okay, there you go. It is actually printing it. So this is the response that I got. Say you're a startup, right? And you wanna integrate AI in your application and you don't have money to pay for a open AI's API key, for example. Then what you can do is you can run DeepSeek R1, like how I'm gonna show you in your local computer. It's gonna be the distilled version of it, meaning a little worse version than what is there on the out on the internet. But there's an advantage. If you can build a good application using the distilled version of your model, then when your application will become successful, when you will actually get the money to do so, your application will only go up. So you will have a good bottom line, which is free of cost. All right, so let's get started. Hello there. So a lot of things are happening, right? In the AI world, especially. Um, things are moving so fast, it's really hard to catch up. But if you guys know all the fundamentals and if you have a good grip on the new upcoming key terms and techniques, for example, GRPO, Group Relative Policy Optimization, understand the scaling laws that is making so much hype and buzzwords like distillation, quantization, pruning and all that stuff then you will understand exactly what's happening and how things are happening and you will even be able to like forecast things so the purpose of this video which is the first in a series of upcoming videos is to show you guys how exactly to use your cpu use your ram all the computer resources that are on your personal computer and load the open source models for example deepseek r1 or meta's llama 3.3 and run it on your resources and this is really important for you to understand, get a feel, build an intuition on how a 3 billion parameter model feels like. How is it like to talk to a 14 billion distal version of the DeepSeek R1 to stay ahead on the curve? All right, now I'm gonna ask you to come down. So I will quickly show how to download Olama, how to run Olama, and how exactly is it running under the hood. So I'm gonna open Safari. Uh, I'm gonna search olama.com. It's a pretty simple link, just type it in. We're gonna click on download. And because I have a Mac OS, I'm gonna download it for Mac OS. And it is complete, there you go second time so i'm not gonna reinstall it i already have it installed but i'm gonna request you to install it real quick um so i'm gonna run it it's gonna verify and do steps like that so nothing happens really um you can see it up there it just stays there but now you can open your terminal and type in commands which will allow it to run there right let's see also um, if you want to take a look there are so many models that they have deepseek r1 llama 3.3 5.4 which is pretty good um one of the best most professional model out there llama 3.2 mistral quen 2.5 gemma quen 2 and so many right you get the point well, i'm gonna zoom it in so what you're gonna have to do is just type in a llama and you can see it's usage and it's available commands and it's flags. Flags, by the way, if you guys do not know, is a way to access different functionalities. These are some arguments that starts with dash or double dash, whereas main commands do not have dash in front of them. For example, one of the main commands is run and one of the main commands is list and pull. Pull command is the first one that you're gonna have to run because you want to pull, for example, one of these models. Um, I already have the deep seek R1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to pull, for example, 5.4 model. This is a 14 billion parameter model. Um, it's a pretty big one. That's the only quantization that they have. 
And also we're going to talk about quantization real quick. Um, also there's the command to run it. I think if you run a model that you do not have, what Olama does is it installs or pulls automatically. So you don't have to run pull command directly. You can just run the run command and it is pulling. Uh, we're going to have to wait a bunch 43 megabytes per second. It should be not that slow. All right, so there you go. It is fully downloaded. Now you can close this terminal um, or go ahead and like chat to it. But I'm going to show you, let's say you close this terminal, what's going to happen. Then you can run your terminal again. And let me zoom it in so they can see clearly. So you can run Olama run 54 and it's gonna run right there now you can start talking again none of the conversations from previously is gonna be stored um this is running locally and it is like the best thing that you can do to ensure your privacy none of your data is going out at all right now look at that i turned my wi-fi off right and it can still run um hi 54 um why should i call you give me a uh, hilarious name for you. I'll see. It's cooking. It's cooking. And look at the speed. Like it is producing tokens so freaking fast. And this is a 14 billion model. It is not a small model. Um, okay. What did it say? Quirky Quester. Uh-huh. <laughs> Giggle Ginny. Let's see. Hi, Quirky Quester. But there's more to it. So for example, if you're going to say, um, Olama run five four. Then it's gonna come right here. But if you see like in the bracket, it's saying slash question mark. So these are the commands that you can use to access like even finer things. For example, um, finer control. For example, you can change the temperature of the model, meaning it will be more unpredictable. It will try to be more creative. Um, but all that you can like see in other tutorials. That's not what I'm exactly I'm here for. You can like play around with all these things and you can understand how exactly these things are gonna work. And if you wanna like close it, um, you can say slash buy and it's gonna be closed. But I wanna show you something. For example, if I open my activity monitor, um, you can see here the memory, the RAM memory being used right now is 7.53 gigabytes. And the cache uh, memory cache files are 8.3 something gigabytes. If you'll add both of these, you will see that uh, about 14 um, gigabytes of RAM memory is being used by this 5.4. All right, let's take a closer look at exactly what happens when you run the Olama pull command on your laptop. Your laptop makes an HTTP request over the internet asking for the data servers of the Olama to send the model weights. If you'll take a closer look at the architecture of the model, LLMs are nothing but multi-layer perceptrons connected with multi-head attention layers and if you keep repeating these pairs enough of the times, when the overall number of parameters reaches in billions, intelligence emerges. This is a very primitive form of intelligence though. It is just imitation intelligence, meaning whatever training data the model saw, it can kind of imitate it. By default, all of these numbers are stored in the SSD, which is the only persistent memory that is in my MacBook. Persistent means permanent, Meaning if you restart your laptop, your persistent memory do not die. Whereas everything in your RAM is volatile. It dies off if your laptop restarts. But your SSD cannot communicate with your processing cores fast enough. Not as fast as RAM. So your CPU instructs your SSD to hey, send all the model parameters into the RAM so that the GPU cores can access it. Once all the model parameters are loaded into the RAM memory, the inference can begin. And this kind of architecture, by the way, is called the unified memory architecture, where the RAM is shared between both CPU, GPU, and any other kind of processing units. Once the model weights are downloaded, you can actually inference or run the model in your laptop. and REST is being used by um, the Safari or the OBS that I'm shooting the video on right now. So yeah, I can access my terminal like normal now. 
So here's some cool stuff that you can build. I'm gonna show you guys like a quick demo of what I build. So this is a project that I built for a, a company called Peaks Capital. Um, this project was pretty cool. Um, what it does is it is a rag system, meaning retrieval augmented generation. I'm retrieving some content and injecting into a wrapper prompt, which is the final thing that goes to the LLM. And I build this entirely locally, meaning uh, it is fully private. The, it was one of the company's requirements that um, it should not call any OpenAI's API, for example, uh, which actually kind of like steal data from you. It learns the model trains on interacting with you, but here it is completely locally, um, running completely locally and no privacy issue whatsoever. Um, so I wanna like show you guys exactly. So there's a this is the main file which implements the rag logic. Um, also like, by the way, this project was so intelligent that it can see uh, if there's more information required for it to come to any conclusion, then this can do dynamic API calls um, on the company's API endpoints and it can bring in information to like, to serve better and more intelligent answers to the users. And there you go. So there's a Python library called Olama that you can install using a Python package manager like pip or something, pip or conda. Let me show you how exactly to do this here. So I'm gonna do pip install Olama. Um, also, this is assuming that you have Python installed in your computer. For my computer, it is already installed. That's what it is saying. So I'm gonna clear I'm gonna run a Python. So you can just type in Python and it's gonna start um, executing Python commands in your uh, CLI terminal. From Olama import client. Uh, so the client is a class. You can make an object of it. Um, like client equals. This is how you make an object. It does not take any um, default initialization parameters. So you, you can go ahead and click enter and there are different things you can do with it for example chat is one of them so i'm going to show you how to chat with it chat there's some parameters um default important parameters that needs to go in um for example we're going to take this as a reference my projects okay model name first thing is model name model um equal i'm going to call five four the one that we just saw um, and then I'm gonna, then I have to tell it messages that I wanna send it. And each message um, is a dictionary, is formatted as a dictionary. Uh, first key is role, then first value is user, then content. And the first content will be what I wanna say. It. For, so for example, let's ask it, hey, who are you? Who built you? Are you intelligent? Are you any smart? All right. Let's see what happens. I think it's gonna print it, but I forgot to write print statement on it. So I don't know. Let's see. It should print it. Okay, there you go. It is actually printing it. So this is the response that I got. Uh, the response is pretty sophisticated looking. So in Python, you can like actually slice it, remove chat response, all this stuff. And you can only take in the response there. Uh, hello, I'm Phi, a language model developed by Microsoft. My primary function is to assist users by providing information and answering questions to the best of my ability based on all blah, 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 blah. And you can like slice this off right here and render it in your, any browser-based application or any web app. But this is completely running locally. I'm not uh, even on Wi-Fi. So that is just to show you how you can bring intelligence in locally running applications, not even connected to the internet, which is pretty powerful. During an LLM inference in non-UMA based architectures, meaning non-unified memory based architectures, the data or the model weights stored in the SSD has to first go into the RAM instructed by the CPU. And the CPU further instructs that data to then go to the GPU memory via PCIe buses. This entire process is much slower if you will compare it with the UMA architecture. So NVIDIA had to do something about it. What they did is they brought up something called GPU direct storage or GDS architecture, where the data can be transferred directly from 
NVMe SSD to the GPU memory, which is the VRAM, without passing through the system RAM, freeing up a lot of overhead for the CPU and for the RAM.